Okay, so I just want to give you a quick idea how this pressure switch actually works upon a compressor. We'll take this cover off. I'm going to release some air through this uh, pressure relief valve right there. Then the motor is going to kick in and then it will pump and you will see that the diaphragm inside here will be pushed upwards, thereby uh, disconnecting the contacts and turning the motor off automatically. So let's check that out now. So we're going to watch the compressor pump up to about 100 psi here. And you'll see the diaphragm will get pushed up, disconnecting the contacts. Just giving you another view of this pressure switch. So on the bottom here, when you open this up, you'll see it has a big plastic, it's basically a plastic lug or a button if you like. And that is actuated by this diaphragm. It's just a piece of rubber, it's pretty thick. And when air is being pumped inside of, uh, inside of there, it then pushes this rubber diaphragm upwards. And what happens is, depending on how tight you have this spring tightened here, and that's determined by the bolt that runs through the body of it, okay, you can loosen that or you can uh, increase the pressure in that. It will push this upwards and what that does, that actuates this whole system to be pushed up and when that gets actuated, the contacts become open and it turns the compressor off. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Okay, so what I wanna do is just try to explain a little bit better how one of these cheap Chinese pressure switches actually work. So this is typically within the range of 90 to 120 PSI. Just a couple of things I'll point out first of all is this is generally the on off switch like this. When we've got the cover on top, there is a red button on top and normally that is the off position and this is the on position. If we were to be a bit more technically correct, it's not on, it's the auto position. So off, auto. And the reason it's called auto is because this automatically will turn the motor on or off depending on how much pressure there is in the tank. And I'll explain that a little bit further. So. We have off and we have auto. Now if we look over here and these are the contact switches, all right, when they are open, okay, this is in the open position, this means the motor is off. There is no circuit that actually transfers across between, you know, your live and your neutral. When they are contacting, we have a closed circuit and it power runs on through. So this activates the motor when it's like this, off, on, or auto. Let's have a look at a few other things. We've learned also that this is our unloader valve, okay, and this is the part that failed for me, and uh, this is very, very important. And here we have it. This here is the check valve that is faulty. Let's take a closer look. Now, this part here, there should be some sort of a valve or something that pushes up, and it's not, it's like stuck. Let's just show you this check valve a little bit better. There's the little valve there. There's an escape port or an air escape port right there. If we were to try to grab this little valve, okay, it's spring loaded. It should be like that. That's the closed position, but for whatever reason, it's pushing down. So there is a fault there or a failure. It should be like that, but it's not. It's constantly in the open position, and we need to find a new one of these. And this is what was problematic for me, and can be for many, many compressor issues. It's either this, or it's the check valve over at the tank. In here is our main uh, 12 millimeter intake valve. As air is being compressed, pumped into the tank, 
it comes here and it's pushing up here. It pushes onto that rubber diaphragm that I showed you earlier and that diaphragm, there's a lot of pressure here and it's pushing, pushing, pushing. Now it's pushing something, okay? That's just how this is designed. I'll just show you, first of all, there is a spring here. This spring is very important and it's uh, controlled by here. The tension of it can be loosened or increased. And basically what this does is this will control how much PSI your tank is being pumped to. So if you make it loose, you know, we and here it says plus minus. So if we go anti-clockwise, then it's going to be opening up this spring, making it a whole lot more looser, lowering the amount of PSI in your tank and uh, requiring uh, the pressure switch to be activated a whole lot more often. If we want to increase the amount of pressure that is pumped into our tank, we screw this clockwise, the spring goes up, there's a whole lot more tension, and this switch will not actuate or it will not turn on until there's a whole lot more pressure in the tank. So I hope that makes sense. So now let's take a closer look as to how this mechanism exactly works to turning on and off. How does it do that automatically? Well, there's a few components here I want to sort of show you and I want to actuate this so you can see. And I'm going to use my trusty pair of pliers to do this in just a moment. Inside here, there is a plastic lug right there. It's hard to see right here, but it's sort of square and the diaphragm pushes up on that plastic lug. And that does something. It actuates this arm. Let's call it an arm. It's like a U-shaped bolt and it's got a cylindrical bar that goes across there. As that plastic component is pushed up by the diaphragm, it pushes this arm upwards on the inside. And to simulate that, I'm going to get my pair of pliers and let's just try to show you what that would look like. This mimics when the diaphragm pushes up, so much pressure pushes up, up, up. The plastic lug on the bottom actuates this arm like this. All right, so what does that do? What the heck does that do? What that does, when we look at it like this, ah, suddenly we see this other arm all the way down there. That one there. And this is where there is a spring here, which is critically important. The spring is connected to here and here under tension. So when this plastic lug over here is pushed up by the diaphragm, it actuates that arm upwards. What the heck does that do? That actuates the spring and the spring pushes this component down. Let me just change it up so you can see it. So pushing that arm up, actuates this arm over here and the spring pulls it down and that does something. Well, what the heck does that do? I'll tell you what it does. I'm glad you asked. When that spring pushes down on that component like that, look what happens to our contact points. Aha. Right, so you start to get the picture of what's happening now. What will happen is your compressor is, this is the off position. You turn it on. If there's no air in the system, low pressure in the tank, it, the motor is activated because it's been turned on, the contacts are touching. Pressure is being pumped by the motor. It's going into the tank. Pressure is building up as it's going up into this intake, this 12 millimeter intake valve right there, and pressure is pushing up against that diaphragm. Pressure increases, 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 90 PSI, 100 PSI. And depending on where you have this uh, spring tensioned to, at some point, pressure is going to be building, building, building. And this bolt, it starts to push up. And then finally, it's at pressure. It turns the switch off. Now, this is where how this unloader valve comes into play right here and how it works. Whilst this is working and operating, this unloader valve is in what is called the open position. So generally, if I can get this angle correct, the little needle of the unloader valve is gonna be pushing up on this little 
uh, nib right there. And when the valve is like that, the valve is closed. It's being pumped and air that's being pumped into the tank past the check valve at the tank and then this line that comes up here, no air escapes while it's being pumped. Then once this gets actuated, have a look at this part here. Did you see that? That part right there presses down. So when the compressor switches off, off, that pushes down. What's it pushing down on? It's pushing down upon the needle of the unloader valve. Well, what does that do? Well, if you remember when the unloader valve is pressed down, it's open. And so when this is off, that last bit of air that's left in the um, pumping line gets expelled out this exhaust line. So it comes up through the unloader valve when this is open and it goes And while the compressor is switched off in this state, that's pushing down upon the needle of the unloader valve, which allows an open vent. And so air escapes out, out through the unloader valve. And so when you start to use the air in your compressor tank, the pressure starts to reduce, reduce, reduce. As it gets less and less and less, this drops down, the spring pushes it back re-engaging the contact points and then the whole cycle commences again. And that's the way these cheap Chinese pressure switches work. They might be cheap, this just costed me $15, but they're very, very clever. And they work a treat and this unloader valve is a key integral part of any pressure switch. If this doesn't work, this whole unit really will not work properly and you need to get that repaired or in my instance replace the whole pressure switch.